One year ago, I started a brand new hardcore world. 12 months and 3,000 in-game days later, we're somehow still alive. And to celebrate this milestone, I think it's about time we revisited our builds and finally do a world tour. And maybe even tidy up a few outstanding things along the way. But before we get started, this is the seed. It should be on screen above my head right about now. And as we visit the different areas, I'll also pop the coordinates on screen. Because in a month or so, once I've tidied up a few areas of the world and made it a little bit easier to navigate, I will be releasing a world download the very first one of this world in fact to all of my patrons of any level so you can explore it for yourselves but now though let's get on with the tour and the obvious place to start of course is probably our first island which is right up there in the other corner we're, we're, we're currently down here in this corner so let's head on over and start the tour i don't think i've ever done one of these before and here we are over at our starter island. This is the very first little island that we built on, although it did end up expanding to three islands, but we'll get to that shortly. But this is in fact where we started. This whole island was covered in jungle, and this is the very first house we built, which I still absolutely love, because this was built just as Mangrove had come out. It was a brand new block. We had a lot of fun playing around with it and experimenting, although, actually, while I think of it, maybe I should actually finish off the roof. I never did get round to texturing this side. I don't know why I missed just this side, and I've mentioned it a few times, but I never did actually finish it off. But I did know this needed doing, so I have actually brought everything with me that I need. There we go. Better late than never, I guess. Now let's get back on with the tour. So this is our starter house. It's got a lovely little basement down the bottom here. This is actually our very first mine as well, but there's not really much to see down there, at least not just yet. And this was our very first storage room. Oh, I remember this. Trying to cram everything in here. Ha! We definitely upgraded that in the end, didn't we? And there was a bit of overflow storage up here as well, which I think we used a little bit. Not too much. It's just stone. I've got so much stone everywhere. And then this goes up to the first floor, which had even more storage for some of the sort of fancier bits and so on. And then we have our bedroom at the top here, but it's a nice little house, lots of room for storage. And to be honest, I really like how this looks from outside as well, actually. I think this came out quite well. But what else have we got around here? I mean, this is probably my favorite build. So this is actually the blacksmith building that we did. This is our first furnace array. So if we go inside here there's nothing to actually see on the ground floor but if we go up this level here we have our furnace array that's looking pretty cool and this is all loaded from the top floor which works well it did serve us well but we've got a much bigger one now which is definitely better and everything that gets cooked actually goes if we drop down here everything that gets cooked actually comes into these boxes here in fact there's some leftover stuff there it seems but i have to say i do love the shape of that building it looks very cool and next to that we have our fishing hut there's not actually anything in there not even a farm nothing it's just a hut it's empty and then over here we have our moss farm which doesn't actually have an interior let's just close that for now but that is actually a moss farm nothing too special and then we have our ginormous tavern which is our first and currently it's really our only mob farm but that's something we're going to be solving very soon we're going to be making ourselves a brand new mob farm but we'll get to that later but the tavern wasn't originally intended to be a tavern it was going to be like a big castle out here on the edge of the coast but we kind of changed our mind and i'm really glad we did because it did come out really well and if we head inside it is a fully fledged tavern we've got seats we've got a bar we've got everything we need and we've also got the kill chamber for the mobs so when the mobs get killed we can see them fall down here and die but the problem with that is to actually make the mobs spawn we need to be outside the tavern in the hot air balloon we also have a chicken cooker in here which is quite cool and oh yeah this here this actually drops down i hope it's still safe it is excellent, but this drops down to our very first little XP farm. So this was the zombie spawner we found. Oh, I spent so long here just for dribs and drabs of XP. But this is also our first enchanting setup as well. So yeah, lots of memories down here. And then back up in the bar, if we go down into the basement, this is the storage for the mob farms. All of the things that get killed upstairs, everything gets collected down here. And if we go off to the side here, back upstairs, we've actually got an iron farm as well. So there's a very small iron farm up here. And although there are some stairs that go up, uh, all we can see here is the top of the iron farm. So you can see how that works. The zombie scares the villagers, that creates golems, and they die. It's wonderful. And the rest of the interior here is basically just the mob farm, which is just a few shelves, and they flush out every now and then and push all the mobs down and so on. Not the most efficient thing in the world, but as I say, it has served us so far but we're definitely going to need to up that. And in order to make the mob farm work, we had to build an AFK platform. So that's what that is up there. In fact, you're probably seeing a replay of it right now, but there is a hot air balloon at the top there. And that has been our AFK platform for the mob farm. And it really just brings a little bit more life to the village as well. Down here next to the tavern, if we follow this path down and round, we can get to our bee farms. And this is another thing. I think I'm going to need something a bit bigger because there's not really much storage here. There's only sort of this box here, which as you can see is full. 
but yeah this one does bottles this one does honeycomb and it's been very good it's been very functional as i say we've got absolutely loads of stuff everywhere but i do need to make one that's got a much better storage system and next to that we have this building here which is our kelp farm so this is when we actually dug out a chunk below for a slime chunk and realized it wasn't actually a slime chunk so we just ended up turning it into a kelp farm and this is what's been providing most of our fuel needs so far in fact i could probably do with Yep, uh, turning some more of that into kelp blocks. And if we come out and go around the corner, we actually have our church, which is a build I'm really pleased with. We try to make it look a bit run down and ruined, but trying to do something like that on a very small scale was quite difficult. However, inside, we just have a sugarcane farm, which once again has served us well so far, but it's probably something we're going to make a much bigger version of in future. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our first island. However, it started raining, so I'm going to wait for the rain to clear before we carry on. It's a bit dull when it's raining, isn't it? There we go. Look much better when it's not raining. You can see everything. On with the tour, and next up, we have our wonderful arched bridge. You're probably seeing a lovely replay mod of me just running across it at the moment. See, like, hello. And this is just, I don't know, I loved this bridge. It was something that I hadn't really done before, putting a roof over a bridge, and it makes all the difference. If you imagine this bridge without the roof, it just wouldn't have the same effect. But that leads us over to our farm, and this farm exists for the sole purpose of hiding a nether portal i mean it doesn't even have an interior in fact it doesn't even have a door anymore but yeah nothing to worry about it's fine it's fine but we have our portal here and we have of course an absolutely ginormous cornfield which reminds me there is actually something i need to do over here as well and light wolf you're about to be very happy because light wolf has been asking me for i don't know uh, what episode did i build this field in not entirely sure but light wolf has actually been asking me since the very first episode this field showed up in to add some scarecrows and i think it's about time we did that there we go, we have some scarecrows scattered about. Light Wolf is going to be so proud. But also over here, we do, of course, have our outhouse. And if we drop down into our outhouse, we have our triple spider spawner, which, funnily enough, is actually something I still use quite a lot for XP. It's essentially this or the villagers. That's pretty much it for that side of the field. But over here, we have our windmill, which doesn't actually have anything in the top as yet. And if we go inside, we have a micro farm, which isn't the best micro farm in the world. It does the job, but I have actually found out a way to make one a little bit better and a whole lot faster so maybe one day we'll upgrade that but that's probably unlikely it's not like i need it that often anyway and then lastly on this island over here we have our giant red barn which actually has a couple of farms kind of well i say in it one of them's actually underneath it because below we have our wool farm and that all feeds up to the top here and then on the top floor we have our small cactus farm we do actually have a bigger one than that in the world now but this served us for a small while oh and we have our cocoa bean wall as well which I'll be honest, I'd completely forgotten about. And lastly, we also actually have our pink sheep here. We found this pink sheep on the very first episode, and maybe this is actually something we should move over to our Hall of Trophies. I don't know. I mean, can a sheep be considered a trophy? Although now he's having a swim, how can I possibly take that away from him? But that's pretty much the whole of this island. However, if we walk through here, there is actually another bridge, and this will take us over to the very last island, and this whole island exists for one purpose and one purpose only. And that purpose is this. This is our mangrove tree farm, which speaking of which, I think I probably actually need to run it again because yeah, we're uh, we're pretty much out of wood at the moment. But this thing is an absolute beast. We have made so much wood from this and most of it has probably been turned into chests, to be honest. I think pretty much our entire storage system was built out of this wood. So in fact, while I'm here, I might quickly run it for a couple of minutes. So let's get some of the, uh, what are they called? Proper gills. Yep, this will make all the proper gills for us. And then we'll get those loaded up into the dropper here. We'll keep one in our hand. Let's just make it safe so nothing comes up behind us. And if we punch this, this should actually start the whole the whole machine. And we need to uh, place a sapling here. Well, it's nice to know it still works. However, if we go back up the top, beside the fact that the entrance and exit to the farm isn't exactly the best or most well-hidden thing in the world, we did build a logging camp up here just to signify kind of what the area is, what's underneath it, and so on. And I really like how this camp came out. Despite the fact we were very lazy and just planted a range of spruce trees instead of actually building our own ones. But that pretty much concludes our starter island area. There's nothing else we actually built over here. There is, of course, the path that goes all the way to the village we built recently 
recently, but we'll come back to that in just a moment, because first, there's a couple of other builds over here that are long forgotten. So following our failed slime farm attempt on our starter island, we came over here to the swamp and we built this ill mango farm. And it's very, very clever in the way it works, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. But when it came to hiding it, I didn't really know what to do. It was just a big black box in the swamp. So we tried to hide it with some ruins that go around it. It doesn't really work if you're flying over it. But from down on the swamp level, it actually looks quite nice. And if we take a sneaky look inside the farm as well, you can see it's basically just a bed of mushrooms. But because they give off a light level of one, the only thing that can spawn here is slime. And as you can see, it's a very, very effective farm. About a thousand blocks directly north of our starter island, we find our guardian farm, which is something I'm very, very pleased with the actual airship design itself was something i built on a previous season of truly bedrock although not for the purposes of a guardian farm however it works quite well with this design by ian x04 so down the bottom we just have all the guardians going into a teleport they go through to the nether and then when they come back out they actually appear in the balloon of the airship which is where they get killed and then all the drops fall down these holes here that we have in the bottom of the balloon and if we go down the bottom this is where everything gets sorted out and stored and me being me and not liking leaving farms exposed i also hit the bottom area as well using a windmill on a tiny little island but we don't go down there it's dangerous down there and i think that pretty much covers the first one and a half thousand days we spent in this world by the time we had built these farms and of course our starter island it was time to move on so chronologically the next thing we did was actually move over to the tiny big garden which is where we spent pretty much the next one and a half thousand days building however there is a slight distraction as well because we did build a couple of other bits near here which we're gonna go check out now. So one of our more recent projects involved connecting a couple of different builds. And I think what we're gonna do is fly down this path here because this is actually from only a couple of episodes ago, in fact, but we built six different bridges and a massive path which links all the way from our starter island to the area we're heading off to now, which is a custom village transformation. We're not gonna dwell on these next couple of builds too much because as I say, they were in the most recent episodes, but this path takes us all the way over here, through the mountains, across a canyon with this wooden bridge here, through a nice little valley, and it actually brings us to this bridge here, which I really love. I, I, I do need to build more like this, I think. In fact, what we could actually do at some point is do some nice builds over in this area and actually use this pallet and just create a small village around this bridge. It's just... Oh, I love it. Then there's a tunnel through the mountain there, but we're just going to fly over the top of it because it's not too much to look at, let's be honest. And then you can see in the distance there, we have an absolutely massive bridge, which is something I think we do want to add to in future. We've had some really good suggestions in the comments on how we can actually make this bridge look awesome. But eventually that leads us over here to Pine Cliffs Village or Cliffs Pine Village. I can't remember what it was called in the end. I'm sure there were some good name suggestions in the comments. But this village doesn't actually serve a single practical purpose. It was just something that we did when my graphics card was dying because I couldn't go near any of my farms because the computer just slowed to a stop. So we came over here and we just did a village transformation. But this is actually a village I was really pleased with. It came together in a couple of different episodes. We essentially came up with a basic kind of house design or shape, I should say, and palette. And then we dotted that all over the landscape with various additions and tweaks to it to make them a little bit different. But also we did sort out the interior on every single one of these builds. Although it does occur to me there was one thing we didn't do and that was actually to release the villagers. Are they are they still here somewhere? So I think if I dig through here, I can... Yep, here they are. Uh, should we actually... Should we let these guys out? Come along. Come and enjoy your new home. I, I, I guess have they got beds down here? Yeah, let's get rid of these. And if they can figure out how to get through the doors, hopefully they will enjoy their new home. As I say, every home does have a bed, has an interior. Oh, I love this place. And I think my favourite build in this area is probably once again the blacksmith. What is it with blacksmiths? I seem to enjoy blacksmith builds, it seems. But this one has a cool interior, although I guess the poster doesn't work anymore. Now I've put that pack on, does it? Hmm, we might have to change that. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's so happy. He's dancing. He obviously likes the blacksmith house as well. Excellent. And right at the top of the hill up here, we have our church, which, yes, is still empty. This is the only building that doesn't have an interior. But the aim is to actually have a villager trading hall here at some point in the future, maybe, possibly, potentially, who knows. And that brings us to our last and probably most important build area. And also, quite possibly, my favourite thing I think I've ever built in Minecraft. I absolutely love this area. It was a massive challenge to do. And to be honest with you, it could probably still be better if I 
come up with some more ideas, but I really do like how this came out. So taking a closer look over here, we have our jammy dodger and this, the interior of it could probably still do with a bit of work. In fact, some of the villagers don't even have trades yet. But this is essentially where we've been getting all of our redstone and all of our quartz and, and some golden carrots as well on the side. But if we head outside and round to the left here, this brings us to our broken pipe squid farm. So this here is actually a bit of a find. It turns out that this small area here was actually a dried out riverbed. So I've just turned it into a very basic squid farm and everything gets collected and pumped into the pipe over here. And this thing has been absolutely pumping out because I'm in this area a lot. But the good thing is we've got an endless supply of ink and all the excess, as you can see, is getting burnt, which means the farm is just full at the moment. I do love the way these bits fit into the landscape though, and I think I managed to get the scale okay. And the little flies, I love the little flies. But anyway, enough about that. Next up over here, we have our flower farm. So this has just got our two tall flowers. We can just switch those on and it does two farms at a time, which is 100% intentional when we built it, I assure you. Maybe just don't go check the episode. And over here, we also have our cocoa bean farm. We can just plant cocoa beans on there and multiply them. So yeah, we don't actually need the one in the top of that barn anymore, I guess, back on our starter islands. And the last farm we have on the surface up here is our cactus farm. And this once again is housed inside a giant Lego brick. And this is just a much bigger version of the one we had in the top of the barn. And this is producing an absolute buttload of cactus for us, which is fantastic because we're never going to need green dye again. It was pretty much just so we could actually build all the grass in this garden. Also up here, we have our wonderful licorice all sort, which has disintegrated a bit. It's been out here for quite a while, but this is literally just a concrete maker. So we can just stand here and make all of our concretes. Nothing too fancy about that one. And probably the most important build in this world is actually this matchbox over here, because as you probably know, this is where everything happens. This is in fact our storage room and not just this top bit here. Oh no, it goes very, very, very deep underground. And it has a drop-off point here, which in fact I think I'm gonna use. I've got some bits I need to drop off. We can chuck all those beds away. We chuck that shulker in there as well. But this matchbox here is actually something I designed in creative a very, very long time ago, probably about two years ago. I just never really had a right time to build it. And well, I guess it finally happened. And I'm so glad it did because if we actually dip down a little bit here, this is where the magic happens. So this is our sorting machine, it empties shulkers, it sorts out unstackables from stackables, it sorts out potions, and everything gets sorted out either into the boxes upstairs, as you can see, a shulker box just went by there. Or of course, it comes down into our auto sorted storage down here. So here we have 12 different rooms. Each one has a custom theme. So that's all of our sort of nether and deep slate stuff. That is our ocean room, which has our turtle at the back as well. I'm still so happy here actually hatched we have our wood room which does actually need expanding because it doesn't sort these four items at the back yet and we have our stone room and that's just what we have on the top floor as i say everything here is also sorted as well and i absolutely love this area we then have our vault full of shinies although they're supposed to be big stacks of diamonds at the back there problem is i, I kind of use them in the walls and i don't have any more in fact, I even had to steal the ones here for our armor stand at the bottom. We also have our foliage and leaf room, which is very cool. I really quite like that one. And then we have both of our color rooms. So this one does all the terracotta and the wool. This one does concrete and glass and all the dyes, I think, are in here as well. Yep, the dyes are up there on that back shelf. And onto the third floor of storage here, we have our food room, which is basically just all the food in the game. And in fact, this enchanted apple here... I think we should probably move that let's uh yeah let's grab that that shouldn't really be there that's our only enchanted apple so it should probably be in our collection room down there but we'll get to that in a moment we also have our mob drop room so i've sort of designed this to look a bit like a dungeon it has all of our mob drops in here they get auto salted and as you can see we've got plenty of extra boxes as well should we need to add anything else then we have our redstone room. Once again, there is sort of excess storage in most of these rooms. So we've got all of our redstone bits and bobs in here. And lastly, for the auto sorted storage, we have all of our interior stuff and lighting. So lighting's at the back here, more spare boxes, but these are all of our workstations and these are other sort of interior designy decorate -y bits. And I absolutely love the ceiling in this room as well. Love how that came out. And on the ground floor down here, we also have overflow storage. So basically we do, of course, sort cobbling stuff up the top there, but then we've got shulker loaders down the bottom so when we have too much of something for example stone which we are absolutely overloaded with at the moment and as you can see we've got plenty of overflow as well so if anything else starts to overflow we can just start bringing it down here and then on this side we have our super smelter so this has actually got two rows of these there's another row behind this one and same on this side so we've got lots and lots of smelters in here 
and this thing's very quick and drops it all off over this side. And the thing we did in the very last episode was, of course, this room here, which is where we've been keeping all of our sort of one-offs and trophies and things like that so we should put that enchanted golden apple there really and of course our map room but we have the dragon egg we have some heads we have some interesting blocks from throughout our series we have armor stands and of course we have our movie posters and i think with that we've pretty much concluded the tour so everything you've seen today is what we've achieved in the first year of our hardcore world. There is also a witch farm, but I never did make that look nice, so we're just going to pretend it doesn't exist. But I have lots of plans for the future for this world as well. The majority of it actually going to be sort of in the centre of this map, considering we've built up both sides of it. And as I did mention at the end of the last episode, our next big project is going to be right here on this island. But before we can even make a start over there, we've got to do a whole lot of deforesting, so I'm probably going to be doing that between episodes. 